I have a cold that I feel like has a personal vendetta against me. Oh no, you were snotting all over me earlier. I wanted to say something, but I was like, do you know what? I'll let her off. She seems in the horrors. (laughs) Well, we're having technical difficulties. We're back in basically 2020. But do you know what I had in the bathroom there? What? A snot bubble. That is violent. Disgusting. I cannot believe you said that. I actually think I have to go. And you're very welcome along to the Unpopular Opinion Podcast. I'm a very croaky Jen. I'm Carla and I can hear it in you. Oh, Jesus. And that's, that's what's giving me anxiety now because I feel like the whole time all I'm going to be thinking about is that phlegm drip at the back of your throat. Like, I'm so sorry to all the listeners for having to hear me explain that. But if I have to hear it, you have to hear it. So... I've actually... Do you know what? I'm very good. Like, I never get cold or anything like that. So, like, this... That's why I feel like this one has a personal fucking target on my head because, you know, the internal, like, passages in my nostrils are actually sore. Oh. They're so painful and raw. It's yeah. horrible. Ripping, like. I'm like, eh. Mm-hmm. Eh. It's fucking eh. hardable. Hardable, eh. hardable. Um, and then it doesn't help that I move back to my own gaff this week with the renovations and all the dust which uh, I've basically paid for. So speaking on that, we have Patreon. So for a 60 of you, you'll get five extra episodes a month. And yeah, the link for that is always in the show notes down below. You know yourself. Mm-hmm. You know yourself. You know yourself. Get on over there. We did two hours last week on Britney Spears' memoir and the genocide. What, yeah. what a what a combination but anyway it happened that way you know? um and i was i was lolling so much at all the patrons comments they were like gasp they yeah <laughs> gasp they lost for shit. Episode. Yeah, they were like oh my god two hours buckle up baby well they're usually longer than the the main ones that we put yeah. out on a sunday anyway longer. but they're still yeah. called mini salads i think we need to re- rebrand yeah i think we do um but anyway if you want more of our content pop on over there it's getting into the winter weather for some reason, offices seem to think that it's a cool idea to ask everybody to go back five days a week. Mm. Pop on. You know, if you're public transport and if you're just bored of listening to the radio, come on, come and listen to me and Jen. Uh, we get into we get into raw stuff over there, shall we say? It's raw. <laughs> yeah, it's raw. Yeah. Uh, treat yourself this Christmas season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's actually anyway. a good Christmas present. Like, you know, if you can't think of some. Somebody's we'll like, what do you want for Christmas? Get me a fucking subscription. Here, lads, we have to talk about it before we get into our topic. ASOS has puff, or sorry, ASOS is, you know the way the books do become, you know the way we were talking about this before and we think it's a bit mad how like companies, you can just see like all their shit. I just find that wild. I find it wild that you can just like go in and see oh, what yeah, their accounts are. Oh yeah, you can are. see like, like yeah, if I they made a profit bonkers. and stuff. But ASOS have recorded a loss of 300 million this year. <laughs> Yeah. Um, last year was thirty million. Obviously, I think they were they were kind of saying, you know, COVID and everything else like that. People were flat out buying. <laughs> Do you remember how much clothes we were all buying at COVID? I, Where are you did. Going? I took the opportunity and to be sensible and save. Everybody mm. else just went fucking hell for leather on the online shop, and we're we nowhere to, to go. Something. I needed to feel something. Yeah. COVID didn't suit me, you know. Mm. Um, so I, I don't think it suited a lot of people. To be fair. Yeah, no, absolutely. But uh, no, there was a lot of people that did suit. A lot of people liked sitting at home doing I fuck off. I kind of liked it. I'm not going to exactly. lie. Exactly. Exactly. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah, we're having technical difficulties. Our fucking machine that we usually record into just did not turn on today. So I had to come home and now we're doing it virtually. And the second I got in, I was like, dressing gown? No, please. And thank you. Yeah. And I'm living the best life. Home. I'm loving it. Home. I'm loving being at home. <laughs> She's for, oh no, do we have to record it at home? Jen, they're already in the oh, car. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Carla. Dressing going on. Anyway, um, so 300 million of a loss, lads. My only thing is that, like, although they have screwed us so badly with the sterling to euro conversion and the fact that they just decided to bang on their own little 
prices even though something will be like 25 pounds 50 euro you're like mm, don't know how that one works anyway you must have my... an apprentice doing all the trans like the no they're doing just the conversions jammy bastards that's it but um sorry from that anyway moving on it's the only place that actually has a very decent plus size selection and mm. p- petite selection and you know kind of different various body figure selections so that's a bit of a shit one mm. but at the same time corporate greed you know fast fashion all those other kind of things i was gonna say is it because of sheen and team you do you think i don't i don't know i think it's because they've too much shite on it mm. i think they need to reduce the lines that they have and like invest in quality but yeah. that's probably never gonna happen but it's just like they've way too much tat and it's actually like getting assaulted every time you go on the website. I'm like, oh Jesus, you know. I don't frequent ASOS. I have to say, no, I don't you do don't. An, I don't do an awful lot of online shopping. Regardless, like I like to just be there in person. I'm like me ma. I like to pay in the post office. That kind of yeah. attitude towards Mentality. retail. Yeah, mm. no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I'm a fuck for it. Like, yeah, and I have a lot you. of vouchers that never work online. So, <laughs> right, you know yourself. You know yourself. Anyway, I so don't. That, I have no money after renovations. I just work in vouchers now. Food that's stamps. You. That's, you. <laughs> that's, that's us. Anyway, we are continuing on uh, a series that we have started previously. So, Jen, if you want to give them a little top line as to what we're doing. So, recently in the past, we have talked about certain love rats. People, may, may, love rats is in mainly men. We probably will. I think we have talked about. Like Ariana Grande was probably our love rat female, the only Oh one Jesus, don't to. mention it fucking hell, don't oh, mention Jesus, the war. Jesus Christ. Christ. You couldn't be having equality. But the so we've done mainly men, so we've done Leaf and Blue, which that was dramatic. Uh Callum Best. And this time we're doing, Also pretty dramatic. <laughs> well, I mean we didn't get a response from Callum. We have we got his phone number. But we didn't get, <laughs> get his phone we number. We still have to do but something with didn't. that. We're fucking lunatics. I was only thinking that the other day. Like, we should probably be you know, arrested. Do you know what fucking happened? He joined Snapchat because it came up uh, a notification. Somebody in your contacts, Callum, is now on Snapchat. I was like, ah, oh, Jay's Callum's also going on Snapchat. Cause, and it is his, his actual thing because we put him into whatsapp and his profile and it's his up. actual profile <laughs> yeah i know it's wild it's actually so wild. will you dm us on the instagram the, the links below if you don't already follow us just like give us ideas just for the crack what should we do should we prank him like should we no. give us <laughs> can we do so we have to do something we can't have callum best's phone number and do nothing with it ah we can ah it feels like a waste we tried anyway this week and this love rap we're talking about was good old Mika from Simply Red. <laughs> Mika, I love the way you call him Mika. Mika, Mika mad. He, Mika head mad on himself. him, he's a Mika. If ever I've he seen a, a Mika. Mika, he is a Mika. Um, yeah, so Mick Hucknall. Now, I, I, I think this was this a listener suggestion. I think it was. I yeah, it's it's bizarre to me you now. I think it was a listener suggestion. He's had suggestion. such a long string. Yeah, I just it's such a. First of all, the mad old life the man has had. Um, grew up with uh, his, sorry, his dad was a single dad. So he grew up with his dad and he kind of, he said before that like the reason why he kind of became a bit of a love rat, shall we say, is because he didn't have the presence of a, of a woman's love in his life with he, his mother gone. He didn't respect women. Yeah. Um, and he has said, he has come out and he has apologised a good few times. Now what I will say is he is married, he has a child, happy out, uh, living between... Donegal. Nice. And him and SJP. Sicily. <gasps> him and Sis- yeah. Donegal and Sicily. Yeah, him I'd SJP say and Paul Rudd. There's um Paul Rudd's Well he's that's where he had his fucking stag or one of the lads had their stag, isn't it? And apparently Apparently did. now there's a ton of celebs that do be going back and forth. Yeah, Donegal is a big one for the celebs. Oh, come here, just a little. I know this is off topic, but I saw a video earlier of all the celebrities that we need to buy copy because they Gaza Israel Paul Rudd's on the fucking list why I'm heartbroken he signed a petition someone got to do saying no to a ceasefire mm. yeah I don't know the context of it don't quote me on it but I've heard that Paul Rudd's on the, the list the context of it I'm just putting it out on no, my podcast no well I don't know the actual <laughs> like the mandated script that he signed or put his name to 
or yeah. put it against but he was on the list and I was heartbroken did you see the drama with Amy Schumer and Asia Jackson Asaya sorry I think yes. she pronounces it Asaya Jackson instead of Asia fair play to her fair fuck Complete, but also I'm screaming at Amy Schumer. Do you have a problem? <laughs> yeah, I fuck do. Fuck off, Amy. Oh, fuck Amy Schumer. Seriously. Oh, uh, I didn't realize she was such. I've seen a, a lot of stuff on the old TikTok now. I didn't realize that she was such a cunt. Oh, uh, the Jews hate her. Like the Jews don't claim her one bit. No, but the the bits and bobs that she has been doing over the years with her husband, all that other kind of stuff. Oh my god. Oh, with the autism. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. she anyway. steals jokes. She's an Islamophobe. She's a racist, but she claims that it's all comedy. So that's great, isn't it? Yeah, well for her, well getting away with all that, but she, and she still won't be cancelled, which is so fucking annoying. Like, yeah, that is bonkers. It's just, oh, I'm like, no, your your time is done now. That's enough. And yeah, you're. But this is, I think, one of the biggest things is that, like, with Asaya. So Asaya is a actress. And I think she has kind of come out and said that, like, the repercussions, she understands that the repercussions for her will be mad. But at the same time, she doesn't give a fuck. She's doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody just keeps pointing out how Amy Schumer will still continuously work. And I don't know why it is. There's just a couple of very blessed, like, I won't say blessed, like, not blessed as in hashtag blessed, as in blessed by the way that they can pretty much do say anything and get away with it. Will Smith, Amy Schumer. (laughs) Yeah, it's there's more a good so, few of them. It's more so the privilege, I think. What's his face, Shia LaBeouf? Like, there's a ton mm. of people that just seem to be able to do whatever the fuck they want and um, get away with it. So it's just kind of bonkers. I think it's the amount of people that they make money for, probably. Yeah, I think that. And I also think that, you know, the way you live in a little bit of a bubble. So it's kind of one of those things that it's like, um, we all think, everyone knows that now. But like, my dad wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. But her celebrity would be larger than the random shite that I'm looking up. Do you know what I mean? So mm. like if he, not that he finds it funny, I'm just using my dad as, as an example. Say if there's somebody out there, someone's parent or someone's uncle or someone's friend that just wouldn't really be like looking this stuff up that found her funny um, and that enjoyed, like knew who she was because obviously Hollywood is a bigger beast than social media, mm. I would say. And they would, the only thing that they would know would be her comedy that. or whatever. Yeah, the comedy mm. versus versus all the other mad shit that's actually been going on. Her politics. Mm. You know? The man behind the madness. Um, but yeah, so I, I think she had, I think Saya had come out just being like, I know I will face repercussions, but I just do think it's bollocks how we continuously like let these people just riff it, just say whatever the fuck they want <laughs> with their platform and away they go. Well, hopefully this... I, among other things obviously there's a bigger things at hand that need to be sorted but my this might be a, another positive break away from like what's been happening is that there might be a bit more of an awareness and a bit more of a boycott against fuckers like this yeah see it's a weird one because <clears throat> i also saw and i don't know if everybody else saw this but i thought it was interesting selena gomez's statement oh did you see this it's like Oh, oh she'd have been better off just staying silent like she did uh, I I can see why she thought it was good because she was just like I stand for innocent people and that's that it's that simple but it's like shut up with your fucking I'm taking a break from social media because it's too hard on you Selena like you and then isn't rare beauty I think there's a not it's like it's ran by Zionists yeah it's <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a bit of that going on there's too. There's a bit of that going on. Oh, just... Oh, they're but, all fucking... You're all fucking mad, in the words of Ozzy Osbourne. I think the issue was, and this is something that I saw kind of uh, uh, pointed out a few times, was that in her post she says... She says a lot of shit, but anyway, she says, I'm sorry if my words will never be enough for anyone or a hashtag. I just can't stand by innocent people getting hurt. That's what makes me sick. I wish I could change the world, but a post won't. She has 430 million Mm -hmm. followers. Yeah. So her turning around and saying a post won't help to her 430 million followers followers most of them american most of them american (laughs) pro-israel like i know but at the same time 
thinks a post won't hurt, but also has had to come out multiple times and ask people to stop sending Hayley Bieber death threats because of the stuff that she's exactly. Put up. So it's like a post won't hurt, but you a know ho- the a influence. post won't make a difference, kind of thing. A post won't make a difference, but the difference was how much everybody boycotted Hayley Bieber and Kylie Jenner over the eyebrow lamination. Mm fucking bollocks drama that they had not too long ago and Hayley had to go into essentially lockdown for the summer yeah over it because people were so up, like in uproar because Selena had called them quote unquote mean girls yeah but a post won't help it's... a post for a ceasefire won't help okay girl oh fucking hell give us nothing yeah and this is but this is the thing with Selena Gomez and I know I'm 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 rocking into dangerous territory here because uh, you can't say a thing about the birds um, for fear that there's one absolute stan yeah. listening to this podcast right now and just essentially fuming. You have to get over it. I'm really sorry. <laughs> really sorry. You might want to turn it off right now if you're a big Selena Gomez fan. Wanna, might want to mute this. Mm. Mute this for the next while. Um, but I just... I don't... First of all, I don't think anybody has an absolute responsibility to post anything on social media but I do think that there is also there's no official responsibility but there is something when you have that extreme level of influence Mm. and also you don't run your like you don't run your social media page you know so like if she's getting a load of backlash that's grand you don't fucking answer your DMs anyway it's not going to affect your business Mm. like I mean it's not going to affect your fucking online celebrity you'll get other investors you know there's kind of there's just anyway there's a lot more to it but I just think it's um, it's a little bit of bollocks isn't it mm. yeah. yeah well especially as somebody of that calibre like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, something else that's interesting sorry before we go back to Mick good old mm. Mick we introduced him and then we left him oh sorry but, yeah um, the Johnny Gall thing in the Paul yeah. Road I got sidetracked there sorry and then before we knew it we realised that we were boycotting people but um, something else that I think is important because we did speak about it last year when this news broke Al Pacino's ma his mozzer mm Sorry, I don't know if she's an ex-girlfriend now, but anyway, she's in her 20s. He's in his 70s. She had a baby for him. Um, And she is looking for 30k child support per month. Mm. So I would say things have worked out quite well for her. For her, definitely. Yeah, I would say things have definitely worked out quite well for her. Um, Pretty much set for life. She's also going to be putting money into a school a, a tuition fund for him and she's getting 110k up front where does that figure come from like i, I know after mill has gone really expensive but that's a bit extreme it is extreme and there is this kind of conversation i always bring it back to like the black china and tiger case because i think that's such a like very pure form of this is kind of like this is Sorry, it, it comes up time and time again because obviously she has tried to um, go for child support quite a few times for Dream Kardashian, his, her child with Rob Kardashian, and then King. Um, I can't remember what King's surname is. Anyway, but the, the issue I think that it keeps coming back to is that Tyga and Rob have their kids six out of seven days. I think she mm. only has them for one day a week, but she is trying to get child support for all... For essentially 50-50 custody. Mm. And that was one of the things. I think when she went to court, Tiger was like, hey, why would I be paying you child support when I'm the one who's fucking supporting the child? Mm. And this has kind of come up time and time again because I think <coughs> a lot of people are like, oh, it worked out really well for her. Al Pacino was a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. He knew what he was doing by having a kid. Mm. Well, I, I remember at the time when... <clears throat> was it the, She had the baby or she announced the pregnancy, but he was basically saying that he didn't know he could get her pregnant because of... Uh, oh, me- here, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I think I think the reason for that, because I remember slagging it at the time as well, and then, then I kind of thought about it afterwards, and I was like, oh, maybe he got a vasectomy. And, you know, like, oh. there, was a, there was a very specific reason why he said that. Okay. Or I don't know whether it was... So he never, like, delved into it, and I never really looked further into it, so <clears throat> it could have been either the vasectomy... <clears throat> sorry, uh it could be BD. Like I don't, I don't know why he said medically. I didn't think it was possible for me to get a woman pregnant. This was in general yeah. because, like, was he not? No, Robert De Niro was he the eighty year old? 
No, Al Pacino, Al Pacino said Pacino's that. Al Pacino's 80, so Al Pacino so, yeah, is 80. 80. Yeah, he's you're right. 80. Sorry, yeah, he's, he's 80. older. And I was Sorry. like, yeah, that doesn't really die off for a man. doesn't matter the age. So, well, like, what actually, the fuck? Well, funny, funny that you say that. There is a lot of talk at the moment. So studies have never really been done that deeply into sperm. Yeah. Okay. Into the quality of sperm. Right. So a lot of the time, sorry, this is another kind of conversation that um, a lot of people are having at the moment as well because of like bi- like women's biological clock and all mm. that other kind of stuff um, and how, you know, by a certain age, it's because we know that the egg and all that other kind of crack, like we know women's biology and we know like the chances and geriatric mothers and all that other kind of stuff. But there is something a lot of people have kind of said that there's a lot of like women blaming and women shaming when it does come to like an older parent, like a woman in her 40s or her 50s having a child. It's always so shocking, isn't it? When like a it's, woman in yeah. her... But then there's also 50. this big kind of I, I, I uh, you see a lot of kind of backlash, particularly if the child that is born has any kind of birth defect. The blame is put on the woman, mm. but there has been no testing, and that's that, that's obviously how misogynistic that medicine is. But um, you know, it's it's kind of been done, you know, over the years. But there actually hasn't been a ton of studies into the quality of sperm. Yeah. So we, all we know is that the egg and all how, you know, fragile it can be and all that other kind of stuff and all of the testing that has been done just to essentially be like, that's the blame, put on women, God bless, good luck, goodbye. Yeah. Versus the level there has been, like, I mean, fuck all to, I'm not going to say absolutely none, but there has been very, very minimal testing into the quality. Because if you think about it this way, how would the quality of the sperm be the same at 19 as in your 80s? Yeah, and like the, it is the deciding factor, even down to gender and yeah, everything. And that's like. what I mean. So there was like there was a was it TikTok? I think it was TikTok, and then I actually looked into it a bit afterwards because I was like, "This is fucking disgraceful," because you never really hear about it. Mm. But there has been so much like sorry, there's not been enough put into actual genetics of of men as they age when it comes to like reproduction factors. I so just who not, fucking knows there's not nothing out look look it they're fucking responsible for an awful lot i went yeah. to the hospital <laughs> wait i tell you tell you this story right i went to the hospital during the week got me date me section d 20 yeah. 21st of december lads and lassies that's beep, when beep, right in time for christmas beep beep that's when she'd be arriving now it could be a day earlier could be a day late depends on the surgeon but generally that well like officially going forward that's the day but she had said to me because I'm having an elective section this time because I it was rec- first of all the person who reefed Bobby out me she said going forward I recommend you get sections just because of your makeup and the size yeah. of the baby it didn't really suit anyway I didn't labour on Bobby at all he wasn't going anywhere she just said to me look it just bear in mind labour on him <laughs> I didn't I didn't like there was no I didn't labour on him <laughs> there was he I did not dilate a millimetre on Bobby he was rot. going fucking nowhere we tried induction tried the whole thing absolutely nothing they, like I couldn't like cervix jammed shut couldn't even try and break me waters like just wasn't happening but aside from that I think it was got to do with like proportions and stuff like that but I just remember the surgeon coming in the next day her name was Claire and she just said look at bear in mind going forward I recommend you go for elective sections from here on out like you know this is just like from her kind of post-op kind of observations whatever so when I went in this time I was like do I have the option do I not and then the nurse said well you got preeclampsia the last time so you're kind of high risk so you probably have to have an elective one we probably won't give you the option so the grand two appointments later it's like no this it's an elective section this is the date whatever but the doctor that he was with during the week she turned around and she was like what happened with the preeclampsia did I have high blood pressure for the whole pregnancy I was like no I've always had low blood pressure people always wonder how I'm still standing it does be so fucking low it's like it unbelievably it's like below average of a blood pressure right I says, but from about 38 weeks, it started getting higher. When I was on the operating table, the anaesthetist kept saying to me, do you have high blood pressure? Because, and I was like, don't know why he's asking that. It's, oh, it must be high on the monitor, whatever. And she goes, no. So, so the second baby, she goes to me, are you still with the same partner? Is this the same dad? And I says, yeah. And she goes, I know that's a really weird question. And it's, it seems, <laughs> You're like, yes, it it seems <laughs> intrusive. <laughs> she says, but the theory is, and she says, this isn't like, bible but the theory is 
the woman's body goes can like can have a reaction to the man's genetics and that's what causes the preeclampsia so she said it happened on your first but because this is the same partner the sec the chances of it happening on your second are very fucking low because your body knows the sus what's going on so i says so it was that fucker she goes yeah <laughs> he's a lot to answer for he's yes. a lot to answer for are you fucking joking me so she says it look a bright side rest assured you probably it probably won't happen again this time because your body knows like do you know what I mean but she says that's that there, there is a theory out there that it's the man's like genetics that actually do that to, to causes preeclampsia in women I was like you fucking back came home you see you what a fucking liberty <laughs> So yeah, here I am again. Here I am again so, with you. Basically, th- there needs to be more, like looking into despairing because fuck me, they're lethal. There you go. Um, but anyway, sorry. So, b- Mika, <laughs> Mika mad. Anyway, Mika mad. So, oh my god, she's beautiful. I completely forgot about her. Sorry, I just saw a bird that he was with. So anyway, good old Mika mad. Um, let's chat a little bit about him. If you don't know who, <laughs> if you don't know who Simply Red is, get on the discography. I personally not a big fan I of the music. I hate but Simply Red's music. I hate it. It is like such dadcore. Yeah. It's parent so core. dad My coded. Liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's so parent coded. It's yeah. like, okay, I don't know. It's boomer. Boomers. It's it's music. big boomer and energy. I, and I don't think yeah. you know, sometimes when you're growing up listening to the music that your your parents listen to, you're like, yeah. that's shit. But when you get older you have a bit more of an appreciation for it, like the Beatles, the Beach Boys, yeah. kind of like fucking bass city rollers, whatever. Simply Red mm. has just never done that for me. I have I never come ground, around. A fairground is a good is like they were going a bit it was a little diff. No. It's got the like things going on in the background. It's got the whole nine yards. No. I do. I will say fairground is a bop. I don't like well, it. well, they're allowed one bop, you know? They're allowed one. Anyway, good for him. Good El Mika now is 63. Born in the US but grew up in the UK from there. His great grandparents, sorry, not his great grandparents, his grandparents are from Offaly. Nice. No, there you go. Mm-hmm. And as I said earlier on, uh, the mum bopped pretty live out after he was born. So he's brought up by, sorry, he was three actually. Um, so he's brought up by his dad. Okay. There you go. Anyway, lots about him. We all, like, Simply Red is his most known musical thing. Mm-hmm. He was the front man and kind of like, to be honest, I don't know a fucking thing about Simply Red yeah. other than him. Uh, uh, big into the day of Labour Party big mates with Tony Blair makes sense yeah, <laughs> yeah to be honest makes sense um, anyway he's <laughs> anyway his personal life is what we're here to talk about <laughs> uh, which is actually so surprising because I would have thought he was like an uncomplicated undramatic king no he is like he's a complicated undramatic king anyway a couple of things that I think are interesting he owns a full estate in Donegal um, he actually owns like his bandmates and him own the estate. Nice. Kind of, it's nice, but it's also kind of strange. Uh, they have a fishing and hunting tourism business. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Um, so anyway, he's sued the fucking council a few times. <laughs> in different neighbours. Anyway. Why? I think that, yeah. Just for like fishing rights and all that other shit. You know, Fair all right. that bollocks that goes on when you own a manor. See, when we retire, I want us to do something like that. Start fucking suing Sue? everybody. Yeah. Sue each other. Buy something Sue. together. And they set um, up a little business that we don't even need to like supervise and then just start suing everyone. Yeah, why not? Yeah, fuck it. Passive income. Yeah. You know? Um something else that I think is interesting is that he spends sorry, he kind of basically lives Donegal, UK and Sicily, Catania. And the reason why he spends so much time in Sicily is because he produces wine there. Can you guess the name of the wine? Is it Simply Red? No, I, that would have been fucking better. Uh, that is it been not better. Simply Red? No. What is it? That would have been so much better. It's Il Cantante. Do you know what that I stands for? I would have never for? thought that. Do you know what that stands for? What? The singer. Oh, fuck off. I can think of 10 names off the top of my head that are breakaways from Simply Red other than that. I know, that, that would have, yeah, that would have made sense. Anyway, a couple it of things. could have Simply White, Simply Rosé. 
Like, that would have been brilliant. Maybe it's because of Tesco and Simply Fine. Like, I'm sure there's a reason why they couldn't have done it. Because uh, that's a big miss. It, he's that's fucking miss. suing people over fishing rights. He would have sued fucking <laughs> Dunn's. Or, what was it? Yeah, Simply is Dunn's, isn't it? Yeah, it's Simply. Yeah, he would have fucking suing them. Dunn's stores. Yeah. <laughs> Mick versus Dunn stores. Anyway, uh, that's, yeah, Simply Red, Simply White, Simply Rose. That would have been great. He should fucking be coming to me for the advice, I tell you. Yeah, that was, you're brilliant at branding. Look at you. <laughs> brilliant at branding. There's something well else done. that I'll do when I retire now. Yeah. So, look, his... <laughs> I, just, I have to get it out of the way and I, I just, I, I need us all. If you don't know who Mick Hucknall is, I need you to go and have a give. Everybody knows who Mick Hucknall is once they see a picture of him. Okay, cool. So anyway, he has said previously in the past, and this has been corrected a good few times, he said that he slept with over 3,000 women. Yeah, take that in. I'm just letting the, I'm letting the dead silence happen. He said between... 1985 and 1987 he was shagging three birds a day okay <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna give you some just moment. a little there's no video this week um just, I'm here I wish there was I really wish there was I don't like I've said it before sometimes I can't help it especially with me pregnancy hormones I could find it very fucking hard to hold back but if you've if by now you've seen the picture of Mick Hucknall, I'm trying my very best to believe what he's saying, but I'm sitting here with squinted eyes. I absolutely believe what he was saying. Because wait until I tell you some of the birds that he's been with. He must and also be some because mover. <laughs> he must be some fucking great he must be some mover. He must be some mover. <laughs> he must have a great personality. Cause... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um he said I ne- so he basically said I'd sleep around three women a day every day I never said no that was what I wanted from being a pop star okay so that's kind of very much like he was like I was off to shag like shagging was number one priority singing was number two priority but definitely shagging <laughs> shagging over everything <laughs> top shagger a lost in powers going around the place yeah fully yeah. top shagger good for him um Mick anyway. <laughs> shagger <laughs> he has come back and since said that he never said that he said probably oh he was kind of like oh fuck over a thousand at this point i was shagging everything right okay so i think newspapers kind of it was like you know headlines fucking paparazzi you know yeah absolutely but he has said a good few times that he Sorry, so has he actually claimed he slept with fewer than 30 women? Okay, that's very odd. Sorry, some of the some of the stuff that you see, you're just like, right, whatever. So he's kind of come back and said since that he let, he broke a lot of birds' hearts and he's very, very sorry with his behaviour and the way that he did act. But he was like, look, I if I could go back and change it, I probably would. Oh, well, so, like, reformed. knowing what he knows now, and obviously yeah. he's an older gentleman. Yeah. So, you know, he's more into the suing now. Yes, that's exactly it, Jen. That's exactly it. (laughs) Anyway, he has said, yeah, he's kind of attested that, you know, his people, when he gets interviewed, people just ask about his dating because obviously what a, what a dating history he's had. But in particular, he has said that he was trying to kind of look for love, if you will. Okay. Look for love because he felt like with his relationship with his mum that he never did have. Now they did reconnect. She lives in the US. They did reconnect when he was older and probably famous, which mm. always gives me a bit of a nick. But at the same time, a ma is a ma. Yeah. Um, and he said he settled, completely happy, completely settled down. Now he has a child. He only has one child, um, and he has a wife, and he's kind of settled down now. Um, he was he did have a very checkered past when it came to a little bit of cocaine and heroin, which seemed to be the the thing to do back then the drug of choice the drug of choice um simply, so he said simply he didn't why? <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> okay he was young fun he loving was pr- having he the was fun own. like what he age was he between branch. 85 and 80 them years 30s ah yeah when yeah. no kids and like not being set. Ah, yeah. Ah, Wait until I life. tell you about the birds. Okay. Wait until I tell you about the birds, right? Get ready. So, I think it's important to note. Um, actually, no. I'll start. I'll start from the from the uh, 
from the bottom. Lady Victoria Hever- Harvey. Oh, good for her. Ulrika Johnson. I can see that. I can see that too. I could actually power couple. Yeah. Power couple, no? Yeah, I can definitely yeah. see that for some reason. I think I remember that relationship Do from you? the media, like, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's why maybe. I can see it, yeah. Yeah. Bridget Nielsen. Okay. You know her. Sylvester Stallone's yeah. ex-wife. Yeah, good old her. Uh, Kylie Bax, I don't know who she is, but she's beautiful. Lindsay Don McKenzie, don't know who she is, but she's also beautiful. Uh, Alicia Duval. I remember that. She's in fucking everybody's list. She's in Callum's and Lee's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steffi Graf. Okay. Um, Which I think is very interesting. Mm. No? Do you not find that interesting? I find that interesting. Who is she? Steffi Graf. Tennis player Steffi Graf. Uh, Andre Agassi's yeah. wife. Yeah. One of the most famous female tennis players of all time. Uh, Adriana Carambo, she is absolutely beautiful. They were together for three years. Good for good for him. She's a cracker. Yeah. Model bird, as per usual. Martine McCutcheon. No, I can't see N- that now. Now, this rocks me a little bit because of the age difference. Yeah, that's what it was. Martine's in her 40s and he's in his 60s. So there was definitely at least a 15 to 20 year age gap there. Right. And that was in 96. So she would have been... Young. Very young. Jesus, right, okay. That kind of freaks me out quite yeah. a bit. Um, Kathy Lloyd, I don't know who she is, but again, an absolute babe. Catherine Zeta-Jones. You are fucking joking me. And the photos of the two of them together, when I mean Catherine Zeta-Jones was absolutely... She is a beautiful woman, but she was... Smoke zone. Banging yeah. at this point. And like this is when she was the hottest bird on the planet, yeah. you know? I remember like that phase. Yes, yes. Do you remember when everyone was like, now what I will say is she's kind of always liked an older, ugly dude. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense, no? Michael Douglas is far from ugly, but she I wouldn't call him hot. No, well he's far from ugly, but I like I do think her taste in men is questionable, yeah. It wouldn't be mine. Do you think Michael Douglas is hot? I think there's something about him, yeah. Shut the fuck up! What? Would you actually... <laughs> Sorry. Would you actually go there? If you... So, right. Get... Sorry. Shut the fuck up. Would you actually go there? Michael Douglas. I can imagine it. I can imagine yeah, it. I would. Hey, daddy. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> I actually would. Yeah! If I was to, like... If I was to... I'm not even talking about his age. I'm talking about even when he was younger. I always thought that he was a bit, like, serial killer vibe. Oh, no? really? Yeah. I always thought that he looked mad serious. Like, he put me on edge. Yeah, no, I just don't think he's the worst. That's... There, there's definitely... Like, you compare him to, like, say... All right. Smash or pass. Michael Douglas and... Uh, Robert De Niro. Mick. I'd pick Mick over Michael Douglas. No, you see, now yeah. I'm questioning you. No, charisma. No. Yeah. Mick Hucknell. There must be something about Mick. Come on. There has, there obviously is Come something on. about Mick, but when you're, you're talking about a phase where he was Mick Hucknell, but he was also coked Mick Hucknell and heroin Mick Hucknell. Yeah, but he had something about him. No, he didn't. He never did. Not in my eyes. <laughs> Smash or pass, Michael Douglas or Mick Hucknell, you're, you're gone with my Mika Douglas. No. Pick a Mika. <laughs> Douglas, <laughs> Douglas all the way. Anyway, there's a couple more birds. So Catherine Zeta Jones, I just had to stop because the photos of them and a pair. So he dated her at the same time as, sorry, not at the same time, but it's within the same year as Helena Christensen. Who's that? One of the most famous models oh, in the yes. world. Oh, yes. Yes, Jesus. Helena Christensen. Brunette Cameron Helena... Diaz. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's a very good, well done. Melanie Sykes. Wow. Like, wow. Yeah. Wow. This is where everything ties in nicely. Alex Best. No mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, so yeah. We're linking them all up now. That's what I mean. Uh. We're linking them all up. Um, and then Gabriella Westbury. Okay. So I think that's his wife now. I think. Let me just check. 
pretty positive this is his wife now. Yeah, they've been married. Yeah, yeah, married for 13 years. Um, and that is who he has a daughter with. Sorry, Jen, you would. You would. Like, he's not the... That was oh, back Michael in the Douglas. Day. That's 2005. Yeah, okay. Anyway, good for Mick. So this is kind of like, again, like no, no other mad, wild, outrageous kind of factors here. But it is to say he was in those kind of like love rat roundups. He was very yeah. much Heat Magazine's kind of person, do you know? Which I just find still so unexpected. Like he was never on my radar as a kind of love rat or like making the rounds. I know, but he was he was definitely suggested by someone and I do actually. I do remember him quite frequently being like, you know, it's always that like loose arm over the shoulder, like stumbling out of a club kind of photo, isn't it? And yeah. like some beauty, like kind of like this, like t- ducking her head before they get in the, the taxi before he goes and shags three other birds, apparently. But like, he was one of those. Yeah. I feel like I always knew this about him. I've never wanted to know this. This information came to me. <laughs> against your will. <gasps> against my will. Yeah. But it was something that was very much conscious when I was growing up. Yeah. You know? All right. You know? Anyway, as he said, he's reformed now. He's got his own life going on. He does have a daughter. The daughter was born in 2004. Um, and he has came out and said that he had, a, like, it was a very dark period for him. Yeah. He has apologized. He said, um, you know, a redheaded man is not generally considered to be a sex icon. But it didn't stop me. Fair fucking yeah. played. Fair fucking played to you, you know. You and Ed Sheer, go yeah. wild. Yeah. Uh, he said, when I had the fame, I went crazy. That's when he was talking about shagging all the birds. Um, I was living the dream. My only regret is that I hurt some really, really good girls. Yeah. And I like that he's reformed and he's apologised. Yeah. And... He's like looking back, you know. Uh, he said he got bored with his sexual adventures. I never got the emotional contact that I craved. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. Ah. Yeah. And he it describes himself as the boy that everybody loves to hate. Um, um I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate him, but I, I kind of see where he's coming from with that. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, that's a bit mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's make a mad. Make a mad. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. Um. Before we go and record our mm-hmm. Patreon episode, I have an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I agree with Catherine Heigl. I saw a video about her during the week and I was like, why the fuck was she cancelled? Now, somebody can correct me, but I'm pretty... Who's Catherine Heigl? Catherine Heigl. She was in Grey's Anatomy. I hate her. Why? Oh, my God. She's, like, so fucking irritating. And I don't think she's a good actress. And I feel like she we were overexposed to her. Not her fault, but at the same time, very overexposed to her. It was like I couldn't turn around for not seeing her. She was in that other fucking movie about being pregnant, wasn't she? Yes. But yeah, this, what was that? So this is why Hollywood gave her a bad name. And oh. I was like, I was like, why the fuck did Hollywood kind of turn their back on her? Why did everybody start hating her all of a sudden? Like, what what was the actual starting point? So I looked up like, you know, these fucking tea spill pages on YouTube and stuff. <laughs> And I was like, what was the start of the demise for Catherine Heigl? So apparently it was because after shooting the film Knocked Up, she basically said in an interview, she was like, yeah, no, it was a good film and it was like, you know, it was kind of, it was grand and all that and it it did really well. She says, but I'm kind of like looking back on it now going, I'm a little bit raging that the woman in it was portrayed to be this like, fucking moan bag whereas like all the fellas and everybody else was just like like a great character that's Seth Rogen isn't yeah. it and I was like, like I yeah. totally get that because it's time and time again and I've been auditioned for roles and I've been in roles and I've been I like I know people who have been in certain projects and it's so similar the men are always like the funny ones the laid back ones the all this the all that and the women are just kind of put in there just to be like a fucking referee and like a moan bag. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what fair. I mean? And I can't, fair. but all of the cast and the producers and the directors and stuff like that just completely turned against her because they couldn't believe she said that. And that's that was the start of her demise in Hollywood. 
No way. Yeah. But I agree with her. I don't think she deserved that at all. Interesting. There you go. I don't really get why people hate her so much. I think I personally think she's fine. And she was like, <clears throat> there was a lot of people saying, there was some, I don't know who came out and said she was a diva or whatever. And she was just like, what, because I speak my mind? Because I'm just standing up for women in like the industry and stuff like that. Or... I'd love to look into that actually. Yeah. All the people that have just been like labeled divas and like why? Yeah. But like she's done it, like Vogue interviews and all this sort of stuff. She was like, well, like, if I'm a diva for saying that, I think it was unfair that there, yeah. were, there wasn't enough kind of. Yeah. No, fair. Like it, in that specific situation where like if she, she says, if I was wrong for speaking out about or calling out the fact that the women are portrayed as being moany fucking bastards, well, then I'm a diva. Like, yeah no and to be honest I'd probably take it back because like what I will say is that all of the characters that she has played have been like mega money yeah and yeah, I think that's yeah. what kind of she started to realise and speak up about and that's why people were like oh because they just kind of took offence to the fact that it was their writing that she was speaking about but I feel like yeah probably that but I also feel like for women it's like if you get cast in like one or two roles that are like people think you're like that because we don't know you enough mm. so you almost have to like breakthrough for people to get to know you so then they can be like oh actually yeah no I get it yeah otherwise they just have that one standing Persona opinion yeah to go off yeah 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 um I think this week we might leave your stomper but you can add one to the list but I added one yeah okay so added she added one. one to the list but because of the technical difficulties surprise but the link surprise. the link will be in the show notes so you can just tap mm-hmm. on the little linkity link and see all the songs that Carla has added over the course of I don't know how long we've been doing this how long have we been in Stomper? I um, I think there's a hundred and something songs in the in the playlist. Let me just triple so, check. So over two years, probably. So over, oh yeah, I'd say over two yeah. years. Let me see. I can't find that bloody thing. It doesn't actually tell me. Uh, no, it just tells me how many saves. Anyway, hey. a long time. There you go. Uh, so you thanks go. a million for listening. Anything that you can click on is down below. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.